Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Welcome, my friend. Welcome to the Tuesday edition of this week of broadcasting here at Bible Tract Echoes. Today, my Bible is open to the book of Proverbs, and this is, as I said, the Tuesday edition, and we give the title of Track and Truth Tuesday to each one of our Tuesday broadcast. We try to use our broadcast to encourage each other as uh, tellers of the gospel. So let me begin with the question, how are you and I doing at telling the gospel? I hope you have personally been able to tell another person the gospel message in in recent days. And my hope is that this, this broadcast and through this broadcast, you and I can, well, do three things. One, we can encourage, be encouraged by what God is doing through other gospel workers. Two, we want to challenge each other to be track users and gospel tellers. And then thirdly, I hope that we can help each other be more effective in communicating the gospel. Recently, I was with a pastor who makes it his practice to ingrain, to inculcate the simple plan of salvation into the minds of his church folk every single Sunday morning. I'm going to tell you how he does that. I think it's a great, great practice. I'll be telling you that along the way. But in a moment, I'm going to be reading from uh, a verse here in Proverbs chapter 14. I'm going to be reading verse 12. Uh, Today, like we have been doing recently, I'll be giving you a phone number that you can use to text message me. Now, it's as different from what my announcer is going to be giving to you about how to get tracks from us. And you'll need to wait if you want to order tracks. You'll need to wait for my announcer to get a phone number or a website uh, or a mailing address from my announcer. But I will personally be giving you a phone number by which you can text me the word gospel, G-O-S-P-E here. And by so doing, uh, I'll begin to ask you some questions. You can give feedback on the broadcast and actually help us be more effective in what we do. Right now in my hand, it's one of our gospel tracks that I think has value in this day and age to communicate the gospel. This track is simply entitled, Why? W-H-Y with a question mark. The subtitle says this, Our Natural Disasters Acts of God. Now, I have been watching the news. You've been watching the news. Natural disasters are happening all over the place. As you hear this broadcast, the folk that are in a plagued part, the flood plagued part of Australia are just now beginning to begin to recover from the the great massive flooding that was there. That's a natural disaster. I'm hoping that God will take that natural disaster, some some God-loving people, soul-winning people, will take that natural disaster and use it as a means to help people that need Christ as Savior, both materially and also with their soul. In this track, uh, why are natural disasters an act of God? And near the end of the track, we ask this question, what if God gave you trouble to gain your attention and to cause you to look to him? Some might say that God never would work that way, but they would be wrong. God did just that to the Jewish people. And we put a reference here of Romans, excuse me, Numbers chapter 21. It says, God designed a deadly situation to cause the Jews to look to him and to his solution. Oh, friend, God does use life situations and including natural disasters to get people's attention. If you and I know God's going to be involved in people's lives to get their attention, then those of us who know Christ need to be ready to and being involved in communicating the gospel so we can be co-laborers in the work of the gospel with our Savior. Well, let me read to you a verse out of Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12. If this verse has not been uh, 
highlighted in your Bible, please do so. Proverbs 14, verse 12 says this, There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Let me read it again. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. You'll see why that particular verse was selected here in a moment. Well, I said I wanted to be an encourager today. I have in front of me a letter from a chaplain, a chaplain in a maximum security prison in the state of Virginia. Here's what it says. Dear sirs, thank you for your large box of tracts. We will be putting them in the inmate request for a box for reading material. Just today, I sent the track transformed to the famous Beltway Sniper. Please pray for our maximum security prison. Pray that God will do a supernatural work of revival here. With good literature to send to these guys, the word does go forth, and God can do his business of saving souls. Because of the nature of this prison, we cannot hold services in the maximum security with the maximum security inmates. Therefore, literature is definitely the main lifeline for those who need Christ. And it's signed here for his glory, and the chaplain gives his name. Aren't you glad there are soul-winning chaplains out there? I wish every chaplain in a prison uh, knew Christ as Savior and cared about the souls. Not every chaplain does know Christ. we got one here that does. We're helping him send tracts. Friend, if you are one that helps us here at Bible Tracks Incorporated, you are helping in a maximum security prison there in the state of Virginia. Well, I mentioned here that I was recently with a pastor who uh, and what he was doing to help his people share the gospel. As I was in the service, I was going to be preaching that day. I was just sitting on the platform waiting for my part in the service. Uh, I found that this pastor every Sunday morning goes through a simple plan of salvation with his people at the beginning of the morning service. First of all, the church began with a very uplifting song. My heart was encouraged. Then the pastor welcomed his regular people and he welcomed the visitors. He gave the visitors a little bookmark that had the, the simple plan of salvation and he encouraged the visitors to read along and speak out with his people. But he said, my people are supposed to have this memorized. And then he said, folk, let's go through the simple plan of salvation. And they used a simple ABC method of the gospel. Obviously, A stands for all have sinned. And they quoted together Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The letter B, and everybody said together, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. And then the people quoted Acts 16.31. And then the pastor said, letter C, and everybody said, confess Christ as your Savior through prayer. And then he quoted together, the, all the, everybody did, Romans 10, 9, and 10. Every Sunday morning he does this. And you know what? The people of his church get this ingrained in their, in their thinking. The people, little do they realize that at a moment's notice, this Holy Spirit takes what they've been memorizing every Sunday morning and gives them the ability to tell the gospel when they're out and about. And by so doing, he begins the service, even with visitors, to think about the Lord Jesus Christ and their need for a Savior. Now, some people say, well, Brother Mark, I think that gospel approach is too simplistic. It's not enough. Well, friend, that you you can have your opinion, but I simply ask you, what are you doing at your church to prepare every person to be a soul winner? This pastor is doing something. I am going to applaud him. Well, let me come to a question. What do you say to a lost person when you're telling them the gospel when they say that they don't believe that the gospel that you tell them is for them? It's okay for you, but not for them. What do you say when a person says there is no one right truth for everyone? Here's an answer that I found in a book I was reading, a book that was written by a man who was an active soul winner. And uh, I, I took the story, I've used the story with effectiveness. The, uh, the illustration I use is this. I turned to the, uh, the man one time, his name was Jim. I said, have you, do you ever heard of Adolf Hitler? He said, yes, I have. I said, well, Adolf Hitler killed six million innocent Jewish people. But as long as Adolf Hitler believed in his heart that what he was doing was the right thing to do, then it was okay for him, Right. Well, obviously, Jim, the man I was talking to uh, that needed Christ, 
Uh, he said, no, that Hitler was wrong. I said, is it ever right to kill six million innocent people? And Jim said, no, it's always wrong. So I said, then there is at least one truth that is true for all people in all places, in all countries, at all times. And he said, yes. So, I said to Jim, you do believe that there is such a thing as absolute truth. And Jim said, I guess I do. I then began to whittle down. What if he only killed three million? Is that okay? Well, Jim said no. And he obviously got down that murder is wrong. I said, you know where he gets to you, why you believe that? I said, because God said so. Then I said, Jesus has stated the absolute truth about sin, about heaven, and about hell. Let me tell you what he said. With that foundation, Jim knew that there was absolute truth. Now, friend, Jim already knew. He just needed to be confronted with the fact that his thinking was skewed. Everybody believes in absolute truth, whether they admit it or not. Well, I began to walk through the gospel with Jim and said, there is absolute truth about sin. And I began to declare what the Bible says, that all are sinners. And there's an absolute truth about the wages of sin, the payment for sin. I said that there's an absolute truth, and I used our verse out of Proverbs, that people can come up with their own methods, that there's a way that seems right unto man, but God says the absolute truth about man and his own invention of salvation is that it ends in death. I then said, therefore, God gave us the absolute truth the absolute method of being saved from our sin, and I declared the Lord Jesus Christ. Jim that day did not receive Christ, but he did come to Christ about, oh, one or two months later on. The gospel seed was sown in Jim's life. His, I, this, his, his safety net of saying, well, there is no such thing as absolute truth had been, had been cut away, and he was now there, well, and uh, I, could, I guess I could use the trapeze term. He was there hanging by a wire with no net, and the Spirit of God took the Word of God and began to work on his heart and life. And Jim did come and bow his heart before the Lord Jesus Christ. He, uh, he did what Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Friend, what are you thinking about this broadcast? Would you text message me? Here is a number. Text me the word gospel to this number. I'm going to give it twice here. Text to this number, area code 708 708- 5156 708-515-4086. If you've tried to share the gospel and somebody's asked you a question that you'd like a help in answering, text message me the question. I'll be glad to try to help you give an answer. That number again is area code 708-515-4086. If you'd like to get tracks from us, and I hope you do, please wait while my announcer gives you the number and mailing address right now. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, You can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.